Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. So welcome to another training session. I say another. If you're just a Profit Protector Pro crew, then this will be the first. But we did one a couple of weeks back for Biobot Pro, which is a sister company of ours. And if you're not using Biobot Pro, you should be. But we did a training for that, and everybody absolutely loved it. So we thought, you know what? What the heck? Let's do another, but this time for Profit Protector Pro. So the intention is this is the first of many sessions we're going to do in this space, in this game, doing showing you features and stuff and how to get the most out of the tools that maybe you didn't know. There was loads of stuff that's been in Biobot Pro forever that people didn't even know existed, like variations and things like that. So we figured this is the same in Profit Protector Pro and we can help you get the most from it. We can help you learn about new features or features that you are in there and have been in there forever that you didn't know about. So that's our intention. But thanks for joining us. We know it's a sunny evening tonight. Uh, you could be anywhere and you've chose to spend it with us. So hopefully we'll make that a very worthwhile experience for you. So as you know, I'm Matt, one of the co-founders at Profit Protector Pro, and this is Karen. Hello. Hey, is, also, is also one of the co-founders at Profit Protector Pro. Dang. So yeah, we, we're hoping there's no pitch tonight. There's no, we're not selling anything. This is just meant to be a training session slash Q&A session. So if you've got questions, hopefully one of us can answer them. And if we can't, we've got access to Holly Pebbles, who's in the chat, and she can probably answer them if we can't. Um, so between the three of us, we should have most stuff covered. I'd have a push if we had to. I could get, I could get the devs, but Probably not going to do that. We probably won't be needing to do that. So, yeah, that's where we're at. Hope you guys are all right. Where's everyone from? Let us know in the chat. I can see good turnout again. Uh, where's everyone from? And do you want to say something, Karen? Do you want to say hello? Yeah, I want to say hello to everyone. I want to welcome everybody and say that you know, we're super excited to be doing this and to spend some time with you guys, get to know you a bit as well for those of you yeah. that we don't know. You know. Lots of you we do know, but some of you we don't know. So it's great to spend some time with you. Yeah. They ask all your questions that you've got, please, because, you know, we want to get them all answered for you. We've got so much information we want to share with you tonight. I think we've got way more information than we've got time allocated on this webinar. Standard. So we've got, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to pack it through, uh, completely pack it with great information that you're going to love. And we're going to answer all your questions. You know what I really like, like about these sessions, Karen? And I, we didn't ask where everyone was from last time. It was just apparent when we were just chatting. Um, like, we had loads of our American friends on, and I love that. Like, we we love you guys. We love our American friends. We love everybody. We love everybody. Don't get me wrong. Whether you're from Canada, France, Australia, wherever you're at, we love you. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it's a lovely turnout because, obviously, we're in the UK. We're on UK time. It's almost, like, extra special when our American friends join us because we know you guys are – I don't know. I guess it's morning for some of you and early afternoon for others. So thanks so much for joining us. But we've got, let me just go through a few people who we've got here. We've got Elaine, Jeff says howdy, Joe Matt saying whoop. Uh, Emma says hello, hello. Hi, Daphne. Hi, Don. So Marion's from Kent. We've got Michael from CT USA. Uh, we've got Michael from another Michael from New York. I assume that's a different Michael. Jeff from Texas. Delect from London, Tolu from Kent, Diane from New Jersey, USA, Simon from sunny Southampton. It's even sunny up in Lincoln, up here in the north, which ain't quite the north. It's more Midlands of the UK. It's even sunny here today. I've been out in the sun. I've had a little walk around today. And just like yesterday, I don't know if I got a bit of sunstroke or what, but I'm just like, uh, sun, <laughs> sun doesn't treat me well. Um, but yeah, we've got, uh, did I say Nicola from Bristol, Bob from Oxford, Brad from South Carolina, Sean from Grantham, just down the road from me. Don's in Wyoming, USA, 12 noon. Nice one. We've got a Mexican friend here, Alejandro. Nice one. Uh, Daphne's in Northwest London, Trudy's in Blackpool. Andrew's o Oxfordshire, UK New Forest. Okay, so we've got, we've got Alabama, we've got Maine, we've got um all kinds of people london bolton we've got, probably got more americans on than we have brits great which That's is amazing wonderful. awesome we love it we love it but yeah i mean you're all welcome the thing is with the brits we've got a rare day of sunshine today so we're not used to getting sun in the uk we just have rain so the fact that it's really hot and it is really hot here um 
like that's not normal. So most people are going to be enjoying the sunshine. So if you are a Brit and you spend you're spending this evening with us, especially with the kids off school and all that stuff, we appreciate it. So we appreciate everybody for joining us. But you know what? Shall we get cracking then, Karen? Yeah, I desperately want. I want to get into it all, and I want to get going and share right. the great information we've got to share tonight. That's it. Let's do it then. So what? How we're going to structure tonight, guys? Is um, we've got short video clips that uh, Karen, I, and Holly, one from Holly, we've prepared earlier and we've loaded into the software. So instead of like screen sharing and blooming all that night, because it is quite night there, especially if you click on something you don't want to click on, and then it shows like a, a password or like a, a secret key. Like I was doing the videos for, for, for it and it's like Profit Protector Pro secret key. I'm like, ah, I've got to blur that now. We can't, so it's not easy to do it live. So what we've done is we've done short video clips that we're going to play to you. We're going to live feed them to you. We're still here. We're in the chat and all, all that stuff, and it is live. But we've got short video clips that we're going to play to you. Like it might be two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. And then we'll chat about it after, answer your questions, yeah. and explore whatever you want to explore. So this is your, you guys' time. This is for you to speak directly with the creators of the software. So if you want something building, if you want something putting it in, in, you can let us know, and we'll add it to our to-do list. You know what? Um, and, and our intention for this is to get to know you guys a bit better, connect with you, let you know that there is people behind the software if you don't know already. And that we, I'd like to think we're good people and we want the best for you. We're trying to build amazing software, the best software, and bring it to you at an amazing price. And you guys love it, and we appreciate that. So, yeah, I'm going to show up. Let's deep dive, shall we? Karen, where do you want to start? Oh, I don't know. There's so much information we've got to share. Shall we start with a big one? Which so that we can go into quite a lot of information. So we could start with something, or maybe we could start with your sleep mode, which might be a good one to start with, just a shorter one to get people used to the format of how it's going to work. So we'll play that one and then come back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna do sleep mode first, guys. So um I won't tell you what it is, we'll talk about it after, but I'll start the video and we'll see you in a second. Yeah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Right, let me see if I can do this. So let's turn our videos off and stuff. Here we go. Right, so in this video, I'm going to show you the sleep feature within Profit Protector Pro. Now, to find the sleep feature, you need to come to account and then my account. Now, we'll probably change the locations of some of this stuff over time, but this is where you'll find it right now because I don't think I think we've added so many features and stuff and things have moved around so much. I think it's time for a rethink on these menus and stuff. But we'll get, if you come to my account and then scroll to the bottom, you'll find this area right here, which is sleep mode. And you can see you can have it enabled or disabled. OK, so what is sleep mode? So basically, imagine if uh, you're selling against one other seller, OK, on a listing. And that other seller is really aggressive with their prices and they're always tanking the listings, for example. They're always penny under repricing and it's super annoying because all you want to do is share the buyer box and just sit tight at a higher price. But they keep tanking the listing. Now, with sleep mode, you can have the prices reset to max prices. Your, re your price is set to max prices every night at, and usually you do this at night when your customers are likely not shopping and they're usually asleep you'd have a period whereby you set it to go to max price so all your inventory would then go to max price uh, during the hours that you specify here so we've got it set up here as 1 to 5 a.m but you might have 1 to 4 a.m you might have uh, you might only have 2 to 3 a.m but you can basically choose what time that is so i'll have it as 1 to 4 a.m so what happens during this period of time is um the pr your price is increased to max and that allows other pr other prices or other sellers using intelligent reprices and yet m a lot of them don't but other sellers that are using intelligent reprices um, when you go to max price and they're selling at a price that's not optimal a smart repricer will go okay uh, I could be selling for more now because my competitions all increased their prices and then they would price upwards. Now, in reality, uh, most people are using rules-based reprices or archaic reprices or free reprices or no reprices, so it'll have little to no effect. But 
it's guesstimated by some people that 20% of listings this might have an effect with. I don't think it's as many as 20%, but it could be up to 20% whereby it would have a positive effect. Because what will happen is um, your prices go up and then anybody using a, a, a smart, intelligent repricer, somebody may be using Profit Protector Pro, their repricer would go, hang on, this price has gone up. So then it would increase the prices and then it would give you um, a, a new start to reduce prices over the following day in competition with this aggressive person without it being like a bare bones minimum. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, um, something that might be interesting is include buy box winners here. OK, so you can have it so that sleep mode only affects listings where you don't have the buy box. OK. Um, or you can have it, if you tick that on, you can have it so that it includes buy box winners also. Now, some people might want that on. I suggest you probably leave that off because if you've got the buy box, you might as well keep the buy box. And PPP is always going to try and increase the prices and get you a better price over time anyway. So if you've got the buy box, I would probably keep the buy box. But you've got the option there if you want to to include the buy box winners and then it will change everything to max price. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically, during the night, um, you can have your listings reprice upwards to your max price, which allows when other people are using intelligent algorithmic reprices, it allows them to go, oh, the price has gone up, so we'll go up too. So it's almost like an option to help everybody make more money potentially. Um I think this is a great feature. I think it is um, probably something you want to consider having on, uh, but ultimately it's up to you. You just tick it there or on or off. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask them. There we go. So we're back. Yeah, we're back. Okay, so let's ask answer some questions that have come in why we were doing that. So um, Gage asks us whether it can do it can I just do it once every hour? Okay, so we, we potentially we will, we will build that into Profit Protector Pro, but you've got to imagine as well the strategies do that for you naturally almost because the strategies are always working hard to high, like make the price as high as possible. So you don't need to do it every hour within Profit Protector Pro unless you're using one of the basic rules. Then you might want to do it every hour, but... Otherwise, you, you don't really need to do that with Profit Protector Pro because all of the time it is pushing up your price, getting that buy box, driving the price up, trying to get you sales at a higher price. But I'm sure we're going to cover that more a bit later as we talk about the strategies as well. Go on, Matt. Yeah, yeah we, we, we are. Now, I, I mean, I, there's an argument for maybe having, I don't know, a couple of times a day, maybe even three times a day where you do that. But honestly... I don't, I, I think for most people, they wouldn't see any benefit from it. I think it's one of those things where you only want to activate it when your users are asleep, because ultimately it's it's going to it's gonna increase your prices loads, which will almost certainly lose you the buy box if you've got competition. So obviously if you tick the box, include buy box winners, then it, it won't, it won't do it or whatever, like I said in the, in the video, but Ultimately, you don't really want to be doing that all the time. You only want to be doing it really when your when your potential customers are asleep. So we could consider adding multiple sleep modes, but I don't know if there's going to be much benefit to that. I think one time a day is probably quite optimal, to be fair. But anyway, go on, Karen. Okay, so Radu asks, are the times in the sleep mode referring to the marketplace zone we sell in? So within the, the um, accounts, the My Account section of Profit Protector Pro, you can set your own time zone. So if you're in the US, you can see it under there and you can change your time zone. If you leave it just set up as Profit Protector Pro is basically, it will be on London time. But you can change it if you're wherever you are, if you're selling, if you want it. So you're, you're, in the U, you're located in the EU, EU, but you're selling the US. So you want it on US time zone. So you can, you can choose. You can do it depending on that. As long as you've got, obviously, US credentials into Profit Protector Pro, then you can do, you can set your time zone for whatever you want it to be. So that's in within the settings. So Diane says, this sleep mode kicked in for me last week. Amazon sold solid buy box at $22.99. $42.99. $42.99. 
What did I say? Twenty two ninety nine. Oh, okay. Forty two ninety nine. My price went up to max sixty two pounds at one a.m. and I got the sale. Fantastic! Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it was, it was forty two ninety nine with an Amazon solid buy box. So I assume Diane means. That Amazon had the buy box at forty two ninety nine, and it was like rock solid. Didn't want to shift anything. Um, and then at one a.m., a price went to max, and she got the sale at sixty two. I don't know if that's dollars or pounds. I think dollars. I think Diane's. I think Diane's in the US. I think that's dollars. We've got a few UK Diane's, but but I'm not sure which Diane this is. But but yeah, it's sixty. So maybe sixty two dollars. So from forty two ninety nine rock solid Amazon to sixty two. So. There you can see right there, it's worth having it on. That's not going to happen all the time for you. Most listings, you're not going to see any difference. But the beauty of this is you tick it once and you let PPP do it. You don't do anything yourself. So ultimately, if it can just, like right there, Diane's perfect example, if it can just steal you the odd sale, at almost, 12, well, yeah, about $20, almost $20 higher, boom, like that, then it's worth having. Absolutely. Gage says the sleep mode every hour will be great against repricing against Amazon. Sleep every hour to reset, then you keep flipping against Amazon so you can take the buy box until their repricer or rematches. So, Gage, what happens is Profit Protector Pro with the algorithmic repricing, and we are going to go into that shortly. So I won't I, I won't like bang the drum too much. But with the algorithms within Profit Protector Pro, it's always doing it. It's not doing it every hour. It's doing it every every minute, every all the time. It's continuous repricing, and it's always trying to get you the higher price. As long as you're on the algorithms, algorithmic repricing, if you're on the rules-based stuff, which we do have, um, then it's it might not be doing that. But the algorithms are all built, however aggressive they are, whether it's soft aggressive or really aggressive, they're all built to increase the price whilst maintaining sales velocity and maintaining buy box. A lot of people falsely assume that if you put the price up, you lose the buy box. Uh -uh, not true. Not when you're using Profit Protector Pro. Profit Protector Pro is always trying to put the price up. Now, logic or other people's logic might dictate as soon as you put the price up, you lose the buy box. Not true. The price goes up and your buy box comes with it. As long as you use using algorithms to do it and Profit Protector Pro is literally built from the ground up to do that. So I get I get the argument on the sleep mode, but honestly, the algorithms are already doing it in real time. Not once an hour, they're doing it real time. So yeah, absolutely. Josh has asked as he's been recorded, and a few people have. Well, hopefully, but technology doesn't always work. So we hope it is. If it is, yeah. then we'll post the link. If it doesn't, then yeah. We're, we're our, our, in, our intention is to record this session. So if you can't stay with us or you can't make it or you want to watch back something, the intention is there is there for us to actually give you an option to do that. But you never know. Sometimes things go wrong. But yeah, our intention is to do a recording. It right. is being recorded, we think. Fingers okay. crossed. Yeah. Right. So we've answered those questions. I think we should to do the next video yeah maybe we need to do the strategies one i go into i do this one and i go into quite a lot of details so this is quite a long video talking about the strategies and what they do and why to use them and what scenario to use each one excellent so i think that will be something that people will really be wanting from this session i think they'll also yeah. want the auto min max if we've got time i think they'll also want the mobile app so we've got a lot to get and we've got your like, like the profit boost ones or the buy box we're, we're gonna have time for everything karen okay. don't worry right. you I'll worry too right. much you worry too much let's go right so right. we're gonna right. we're gonna talk about strategies now guys so a lot of people don't know what which strategies do what so we're gonna tell you now ready yes yeah. yeah. so the strategies in profit protector pro you've got different types of strategies you've got algorithmic strategies for FBA sellers, you've got algorithmic strategies for MF sellers, you've got an algorithmic strategy for used goods, and you've got a bunch of rules-based basic requirements that you want PPP to do. So let's talk through each of those, and we're gonna start with the strategies for the algorithmic strategies for the FBA sellers, okay? so. As we go down these, I've just, all I've done is open up the strategies page so that you can read about them and see them with me. And I'll give you these examples as we go of how they work. Okay, so all the algorithmic strategies within Profit Protector Pro are built to boost your profits. So they all do that to some degree. 
they all have the ability to grab that buy box and take it higher and get you sales at the higher price and obviously sales on the way up to the higher price as well. But what's different in how they work is that some of the strategies are more focused to get you sales and less focused on the profit and some are more focused on the profit and less focused on the sales because you know, any, any repricer in the world, you can get more profit by dropping your price on Amazon. That just goes without saying. That's just basic repricing. It's just drop your price. But that tanks the price and takes all the price to zeros. So obviously, it ruins everyone's profit. So Profit Protect Pro is built to boost that profit and boost that buy box profit. So the most aggressive strategy that we have is Super Aggressive Dominator. Now, what that will do is it will be really, really aggressive in getting you the buy box. Once it's got the buy box, it will try and move it up in price. So you can see here on these little sales and profit dots that we've got. So this tells you how focused each of the algorithmic strategies are on sales versus profit. So this one is the most aggressive that we have based on sales, and it's it's trying a little bit to get your price higher as well, but it's more focused on sales. So when Profit Protect Pro is looking to boost your profits, what it does is it learns a listing. So when you first start Profit Protect Pro out on a listing, it will bounce about all over the place and it will look at what Amazon is allowing it to do and where it's allowing it to get the buy box, how long it can keep it the buy box at that price whether it can go up a, a quite a bit and still keep the buy box or whether it loses the buy box, goes back down, gets the buy box, goes up slower. So that's what Profit Protector Pro is doing all the time. It's learning about the, about the listing. And depending on what it learns about that listing is how quickly it will increase in price. So Super Aggressive Dominator will be the strategy that is really aggressive to get that buy box. So it'll be shoving it elbows and everything and get everybody out of the way so it can get that buy box and then once it's learnt that listing if it's learnt that listing already then it will take the buy box up at a rate that it knows that Amazon will allow it to do without losing the buy box so and obviously with super aggressive it's sales focused so its focus is to make you some profit but its focus is not to lose the buy box more than it has to Obviously, it takes time to learn that listing. So you have to give it a couple of days to learn that listing first. But then what it will try and do is it will it will try and get that buy box and then move it up. But it will move it up gently because it's really focused on sales. So it's mainly focused on sales, but a little bit of profit. So it will always try and take up that buy box, but it will do it the least out of all the different strategies that we've got with Super Aggressive Dominator. Now, of course, if you build, you should always, whenever you're using Flip Protector Pro, you should always build into your minimum, your profit that you want anyway. So that's your basic profit covered within your minimum. And Profit Protector Pro will never sell for less than your minimum. So that's all covered already within that minimum price that you've put into Profit Protector Pro. So the sales, super sales, super aggressive dominator will be trying to get that buy box and it will gently take up the price based on its knowledge of the listing. Now, obviously all this changes, not just for this strategy, but for all the strategies, all of that changes based on what's going on on that listing because different competitors will be doing different things, different number of competitors, you'll have different aggressive competitors. So all of that has to be learned and Profit Protector Pro has to learn all that through the listing and every listing will be different. Every single listing is different because every single listing has got different sellers on it with different tactics, different amount of stock, different prices. It'll be different on everything. So super aggressive denominator is one that you do if you really want to get that buy box and you really want those sales to keep coming in. Maybe you're looking to dump stock or you're looking just to, to have a, you know, a big bounty of sales for that particular product and you're not so worried about your that your profit. So as long as you've built your profit into your minimum, you'll still do well using super aggressive dominator. But it's a dominator. You know, it, it will take on it will take the buy box off Amazon. It's a it's a real machine. 
And that's great when you need that. But sometimes what you want is more profit. So you want Profit Protector Pro to work a little bit harder at getting more profit for you. So if you wanted to work a little bit harder, just a little bit, just a smidging, then you'd go for aggressive sales generator because that is still sales and focused as you can see it's just not quite as aggressive on the sales as aggressive sales generator is so it's not just it's not being quite that dominating force to get that buy box to start with um but it's still trying to push up the price it's just being slightly more ladylike about it maybe you want to phrase it like that so aggressive sales generator is a great one to use. It's still trying to get you the buy box. It's just not working as hard to achieve that as the dominant one. Okay, and then if you look, if we go up to balance sales accumulator, then you can see the profit one's gone up a little bit. So balanced is a great strategy when you want to balance out that little bit between sales and profit. So you want your sales and you want good sales. You're not trying to dominate the buy box. You're happy to share the buy box. You're happy to be, you know, a, a nice, peaceful seller, if you like. And you're happy to, to share with everybody else. But you still want your profit. So Profit Protector Pro here with Balanced Sales Accumulator is looking to get you the buy box in a nice, gentle fashion. It will work hard to do it. Don't underestimate Profit Protector Pro. It will still work hard to get you the the buy box but it's going to do it in a slightly gentler way with balanced sales accumulator and then it's going to try a little bit harder to push up that profit so where it learns when it learns that actually i can sell this product for x amount and not lose the buy box and it will go up to that price quicker than it would with one of the aggressive strategies because they're just focusing as much as possible on sales and balance is slightly taking more of a risk of pushing up the profit it might lose the buy box sometimes, but it will go back down, get it again, learn where it lost it and adjust what it needs to do. So that's balanced sales accumulator. And then you get to cautious sales enhancer. And as you can see, this is a real, like between the, the, the lot of them, this is exactly the one that is completely balanced between the two, I guess. So it's sales and profit boast. So it will get you the buy box. It won't undercut anybody. It's not going to behave like that. It doesn't behave in that fashion. It wouldn't win the buy box from Amazon, but it will sit there nicely competing, keeping you matching buy box, you know, sharing that buy box and it will work hard to increase your profit. So it's working harder than some of the others to, to move up your profit. And then you can see that dynamic profit builder starts to go the other way. So this, this is slightly less sales focused. So you'll see most, most of your sales that you get with Dynamic Profit Builder will add to your buy box boost figure because it's really focused on getting you profit. So it's, it's you know, it might sit a few pence above the buy box. It will still get you that buy box and it will increase your profits quickly. But it's not, it won't undercut other sellers. It's not looking to do that. It's looking to boost your profit. So it will sit just above the buy box, get the buy box because as we know, buy box isn't just about price. Lots of things contribute to the buy box. So it will learn the listing. It will learn where it can get you the most profit. And then we've got hybrid profits harvester. So this one goes even higher versus profit versus sales. Now this one is probably not used by very many people. Neither is passive profit maximizer. They're ones where you, you've got maximum profits. So profit protector pro is really working to get you maximum, it's the maximum profit. It's gonna sit much higher than the buy box. You will get sales and it will, when you do get sales using hybrid profit harvester or using passive profit maximizer, either of those strategies, when you get a sale, it will really add to your buy box boost figure because it's gonna be getting really high profit figures for you. And that's what it's aiming to do. So you can see all of these and you pay attention to these little dots because they really make it clear exactly how hard that strategy is working for you and what it's trying to achieve for you. So it makes much more sense if you look at these dots of what it's trying to do. So then you've got some of these, like I've talked about basic rules. So like match buy box. It's not an algorithmic strategy. Profit Protector Pro will do exactly what you've told it to do. It will just match the buy box, nothing else. It will just match the buy box. 
You can if you want to do penny under buy box, but I really wouldn't suggest you use that. You'll just tank the listing and you achieve nothing because it just decimates your profit. If you're looking to be aggressive with your sales strategy, then use something like a super aggressive dominator or aggressive sales generator or even balanced sales accumulator because those three will do, you know, they will still get you the buy box. They will get you the buy box without tanking the price because they're always trying to raise that price. Whereas penny under buy box does nothing under other than just tank the price. You know, you're going to lose your profit and every other seller on the listing's profit. So I re we really wouldn't suggest you use this one. We put it in there. Uh, originally, we weren't going to put it in there, but we put it in there because ultimately price fixing is illegal in the UK and we can't stop people doing that. But all we can do is put it in there and then say, we really don't recommend that you do this. It's not a sensible strategy. Um, you're far better to use one of the, alg the, the aggressive algorithmic strategies because it will still be just as aggressive as this is getting you the buy box, but it will then take the price up and it won't tank the price. So you've got penny over buy box if you want it just to do that. So it just sets a penny above. You'll still get the buy box sometimes. Um, you know, it won't trigger that downward forcing because you've got to remember not everybody's using Profit Protector Pro. Not everyone's as sensible as you guys are. So um, some and a lot of repricers, especially rules based repricers, just tank the price. All they do is go penny under, penny under, penny under, and they just tank the price because tanking the price is the only thing that they've got in their arsenal to be able to get you sales. So they just lower your price. And you know, you don't, you don't want to down, you don't want to trigger these sort of downward focused reprices because they're just they're just negative and everybody loses from them. Okay, so then you've got match low price. So you can just literally just match the lowest price if that's what you want to do. Penny under low price, once again, wouldn't just do that. Not a good strategy if you're looking for any form of profit in your business. Penny under low FBA price, wouldn't just you use that. Penny over low price, penny over low FBA price. Or you can go 1% under low price, once again, wouldn't just you do that. But these, all these rules are here for you to choose if you want to. You've got the match low FBA price, match low MF price. So all of those are just basic, does what it says on the tin. That comes with no cleverness from Profit Protector Pro. It's just doing basically exactly what you ask. So then you've got the use goods algorithmic strategy. And you can see that that's fairly, you know, profit focused to a degree. So you, it's, you know, you want to make sure that when you're using that, you use that on a, a books listing, like a used books or something like that, then Profit Protector Pro is going to be trying to will learn the listing and try and get you as much profit as, prof, as possible on that listing. So in it will, you know, if you're selling something that's used, as it says here, and no one else is selling that in the same condition, it will try and find listings in other ones and then figure out a price to compete that is sensible based on the others. So it's, it, it's, got, it's a very clever strategy. It's a really clever strategy. And if you're selling used goods, you should absolutely give it a go. It will, it's, a, it's a really good strategy and it will try and enhance your profit as much as it possibly can. So then you've got the MF one. So you've got the aggressive sales generator, balanced sales accumulator and cautious sales enhancer. And you've got the dynamic profit builder. So you've got four different MF strategies to choose from. And once again, exactly the same as you've got with the FBA ones. Have a look at the dots because the dots really help you understand what the strategy is set up to do. So aggressive sales generator, just as the FBA one is, the MF one is set to, to get you sales. It's aggressive. It's going to get that buy box. It's still going to take up that price. It's going to be getting working for your profit always because Profit Protect Pro is always working for your profit. Um, and then you've got your balanced sales accumulator. Then you've got your cautious sales enhancer, exactly the same, completely balanced. And of course, your dynamic profit builder. So let's talk about some examples of different sorts of listings and where you'd use which strategy. So let's say you're on a listing where there's really high competition, Amazon are on the listing, um, everyone's getting rid of their stock because they've been affected by whatever new rule Amazon's brought in to affect something or other, which usually happens. So uh, everyone's trying to get the sales. So if everyone's on it trying to get the sales, you should 
building whatever profit you want into your deal. So, and if you just want to dump stock, then you can work it out and you break even and just use that as your minimum if you want to, or build some profit into your, your minimum and then set it on super aggressive dominator. And then PPP will do whatever it takes to get you that buy box and then it will take that price up. So it'll help to raise the price of a listing where the sellers are all trying to tank it because they're just using their you know, basic reprices that aren't doing what Profit Protector Pro can do. So if you use Super Aggressive Dominator on a listing like that, you'll get your sales, but you'll get your profit as well. So build your profit into your minimum price. Now let's say you're on a listing where there's only a couple of other sellers and like you kind of like your ideal listing and uh, they're happy to share the buy box. Everyone's sharing the buy box. Everyone's playing nicely. And it's all it's all nice and rosy in the garden. So if you're on a listing like that, then obviously you still need to build in your profit into your minimum figure within Profit Protector Pro. But something like that, I'd probably put on Cautious Sales Enhancer. So it's very much taking a match buy box approach to getting you the buy box. And then when it's got you that buy box, it will learn that listing and it will know how far it can take that price before it loses the buy box. And it will keep taking you up to within a penny of that price so it can maintain the buy box as long as possible and get you the most profit for every single one of those sales that it possibly can. So that's a, a scenario where you might use Cautious Sales Enhancer. So let's think of a scenario where you might use something like hybrid profit harvester. So this one is, is really focused on profit and you might use that on a listing where maybe you found a great listing where there's only you and a couple of other sellers or you and one other seller, or maybe you're the only person on the listing and you literally can name your price within reason. So you, obviously, you need to be fair, you need to be reasonable in your price, but as long as you're fair and you're reasonable within your your maximum don't make your maximum too high so if you're going to use one of these really focused profit ones don't put your maximum too high because profit protector pro if it can get you that buy box and keep that buy box at a higher price it will so make your your maximum price a fair price um and then use something like hybrid har hybrid profit harvester and that will help you get maximum profit for your product now let's talk about a scenario where maybe uh, there's a suppressed buy box. So let's say there is no buy box. If there is no buy box because Amazon consider the price too high, set your minimum once again, including your profit, whatever it is you want for your profit, set a reasonable maximum that is a fair price for the product. Maybe you could have a look, if you're using Buy Box Pro, you can have a look and see what the maximum that product's ever sold for, and then you could use that. Um, and then I would suggest to create a buy box, you'd put it on balanced sales accumulator because that way Profit Protector Pro has got the opportunity to work within your minimum and maximum and try and create a buy box for you. Now, Profit Protector Pro is really good at creating buy boxes. So it, it will work really hard to create that for you where there is a suppressed buy box. So build your profit into your minimum, be fair with your maximum, put it on ba balanced sales accumulator and give Profit Protector Pro a chance to, to learn that listing. It will take you know a couple of days, maybe even a little bit longer to properly learn that listing because it has to keep moving about to understand where it can go and what Amazon will let it get away with on that particular ASIN. So you really need to give it that time to learn that listing. So if you let it do that, and then if there's any chance of getting a suppressed buy box and getting that buy box away from Amazon and getting, get, letting them have, let you have a buy box, then balanced sales accumulator is a really good way of achieving that. But we can go back now and go back to answering any other questions that you've got regarding any of the strategies and any scenarios that you've got that you'd like to ask us about. And then we can suggest how you might best benefit from that and which strategy to use. Hey, and we're back. Here we are. <laughs> and we're back. Was that edited the way you wanted it edited, Karen? It's fine. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't hear it. I didn't hear every word, but I was like, hang on, did, should that have been edited out? There's just a couple <laughs> of like little bits, clunky bits where I thought, ah, I think she would have deleted that if she could. <laughs> Maybe it was just me. I don't know. Right. So should we ask some, answer yeah. some of these questions? Let's get these questions answered. Yeah. So Dean says, 
Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, that's it. So Dean says, uh, how does the software cope if there are two sellers or more on the same listing, each using a different PPP strategy? Okay, so Property Protects Pro will always do its best for each uh, user. But obviously, if two people are using Profit Protector Pro, and the whole point of Profit Protector Pro is to increase your profits, that, and if a if it, if it's using if somebody's got it on super aggressive dominator and somebody else has got it on balanced, then they're both be trying to raise the price. So super yeah. aggressive dominator we take will we'll get the buy box and take the price up, and then balance will probably take quite a a slightly more. Uh, match buy box sort of approach so it will then match the buy box and share the buy box so you'll get you basically all get more profit that's basically what will happen because profit protector pro will be on each each for each user will be fighting to increase the price yeah see see what it doesn't do we we considered um we we considered going right if we know there's two sellers on a listing and they've both got profit protector pro knowing that they could potentially do something to kind of help each other, but we decided not to do that because we weren't sure of whether that's even legal. And I know like, uh, I, I don't know if Amazon's free reprice. I don't know if that does some of that stuff. I'm not sure, but but ultimately we decided um, for, for a couple of reasons. One, we're not even sure if that's legal to do that, so we didn't do it. And two, our dev said that actually the way that the algorithms work, it kind of, um, works better or as well if you just let them do their thing individually. So we don't take into account if other users have got PPP. So if there's 20 sellers on a listing, we we don't go, right, seller A and seller B have got PPP, let's work together. That doesn't happen. But what it does do is because, both, and we tested this, because both sellers or multiple sellers are using PPP, and they're all using algorithmic repricing that's trying to push the price up. The net effect for everybody is that the price gets listed, uh, uh, lifted for everybody. So what's that saying I keep saying, uh, Karen? It's not my saying. Something uh, about uh, high lifts all, all ships or something. Yeah, tide, it's, the tide lifts all ships or something like that. So basically, we what we've seen is the more, even though they don't talk to each other, the more PPP users on a listing actually increases the price for everybody in our tests. So uh, does that answer the question? I don't know. But, I think yeah. it does. Right, so Diane says, is Super Aggressive the only strategy that will steal the buy box away from Amazon? No. Any, any of the strategies have the ability to steal the buy box away from Amazon. It all depends on what's going on on that listing and how much Amazon wants to share the buy box for that ASIN. So... You know, but any of them, they will all, they can all take the buy box from Amazon. They will some will try, them. some will try harder. Super aggressive, super aggressive is one of the ones that will really try hard to take it off Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the, and, the more gentle that the uh, strategy that you use, the less aggressive it is to take the buy box. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mean you don't get sales, doesn't mean you don't get sales at great profit, but that's the whole point of Profit Protector Pro. So you've got that, that option of looking yeah. at sales versus profit, depending on what's working best for your listing. On, on a ton of listings, Amazon would just share the buy box. I'm not saying they'll share it equally, but on some listings, you can just have your price at their price and you'll get some buy box action. And then on some listings, Amazon's just super, super, super uh, dig the heels in and go, no, we're having all the, all the buy box action. And, and I don't know how, I don't know how that's, done internally from an Amazon point of view, how they decide which listings are like, I don't know if they've got like category kind of managers that are say this listing and this listing, we're just having the buy box no matter what, because I want to shift stock. I, I don't know how it works, but on those listings, we can still take the buy box off Amazon. And I used to call it the bunker buster technique. Imagine like, I don't know, using a bazooka and getting it into a bunker or something. I don't know. But 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 on on those listings, you're going to need something aggressive like super aggressive dominator. But many listings, you won't need anything, and it'll still do its thing. Still get some buy box action, and when it does, as always, Profit Protector Pro, as built into the name, it protects your profit. So up the price will go. Okay, so Dilek says, please take out the penny under buy box strategy. It was help us a lot. So when we first built Profit Protector Pro, we didn't have it in it. Yeah, and um. Then we put it in it 
And some people were glad we put it in it, but some people were, were upset for us putting it in it. We put it in it because price fixing uh, is illegal and we decided that we should give everybody the option to do whatever they want in terms of their price and we should leave uh, the customer to make their own decisions. But we can, we should strongly recommend they don't use that and they use this instead. So I, I think, that's why we went. I think, I think the biggest thing is there. The, one of our main competitors, I don't want to mention no names. Um, in fact, the met our main competitor, I would say, starts with an R and <laughs> certain, second word E. They, they defaulted for a long time uh, to have uh, plenty under strategy as default. And a lot of people have got this negative assumption uh, attached to repricers and think that repricer equals price tanking. And the truth is... I think repricers are responsible for the majority of price tanking, but that's exactly why we built Profit Protector Pro, because we didn't agree with out of the box saying this is the best strategy, and it was a penny under strategy. I don't know if it still is like that. I don't know if they've got rid of that. Um, I don't know, but but ultimately, we didn't think that was the right way to go. To have a sustainable business, it's not about just dominating the buy box at any cost and the cost being your profits. It's about having a sustainable, strong, sustainable sales velocity whilst increasing your profits if you can. So whereas most repricers do the penny under thing by default and just baked into how they work because the rules based, we don't. We do the upwards as default. So that's why we're always saying, always encouraging people, use the algorithmic strategies because they're going to get that price increase. They're going to escalate the price, not tank it. Um, so much. So ultimately, stick it on algorithmic stuff. Ignore the penny under stuff. The penny under stuff in PPP does not work as well as our algorithms do at getting the buy box, at sales velocity, and at increasing your price. So ultimately, why would you use a rules based thing like a penny under when you can use an algorithmic strategy that does that loads more and maintains sales velocity? Absolutely. Okay, so Kay says, do you have to choose your strategy for every individual item? Not if you don't want to. You can apply uh, one strategy across all of your ASINs if you want to do. You just set it as your default strategy and choose that for each of your, your individual items. But you'd need to set a strategy for each individual item, yes, because you'd need to set your minimum, your maximum, and a strategy. So Profit Protector Pro knows what you want to do for your repricing and what your minimum price is and your maximum price is. So it does need some guidance from you, but that's all it needs from you when you first set it up. And you're going to want to do that anyway, because ultimately um, it might take you 10 seconds or 20 seconds to do that, but then you can forget it. You don't have to ever touch that listing again. You set your minimum, you set your maximum, you choose a strategy. Then if you don't want to touch anything, you don't have to. And I don't know if we're going to go into it on the, today's session, but we've got a Chrome extension. <laughs> we've got Chrome extension and an app that makes that super easy. So the Chrome extension you can literally uh, do that whilst you're sourcing your products on Amazon listing page. I, I think we were the first and only repricer to have a Chrome extension, weren't we? And we're the first, first and only repricer to have a mobile app as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can literally do it from the listings page. So it don't take loads of time. Super simple. You don't even have to log into PPP. You can just do it when you're sourcing and then leave it. And then as soon as your stock hits, boom, you're repricing. All automatic, hands off, automated. Simon says, can PPP recognize other repricers on the listing? It can see, it can tell that there's probably is a repricer being used by other people, but it can't say what repricer it is. No, it wouldn't know that. Uh, Tulu says, will this mean no need of PPC when you have PPP going? Um, Tolu, PPC is considered quite, not an, ad an advanced strategy, but at least when it comes to vanilla traditional OA, at least online arbitrage or retail arbitrage, most sellers probably don't even do any PPC. So if you are going to do some PPC, it's going to be very low spend and it's totally optional. You don't have to. The whole point of using a repricer is it gets the buy box and then uh, organically almost, and it's not organically, it's our software doing it, but we get you the buy box and then you're making organic sales because you're dominating that buy box. But... It, it doesn't mean you don't have to use it. You can use it. They work hand in hand. But but you 
but you don't have to. You don't have to, but it could add a little bit of extra fire. But that's considered quite an advanced strategy, really, for online arbitrage and retail arbitrage. Okay, so Istvan says, how can I avoid silent buy box? Most of the time, the cautious sales enhancer makes the price higher with me in the buy box. Great. But Amazon will show no price on the listing because the price is too high. I would suggest you bring down your maximum a little bit. So bring down the price a little bit that Profit Protector Pro is allowed to go to, and then it will keep you at your higher price, keeping you with the buy box, but then Amazon will allow you to have a buy box. Amazon doesn't Amazon doesn't like you to have super high prices. So let's say you bought a, a product for $10 a unit or £10 a unit, and you thought, oh, I'll just stick a maximum in of £1,000 when when the retail price of that item is £20 or $20. You can't just stick 1000 in there because Amazon don't like it. So that they're, they consider it price, price gouging, and they actively discourage price gouging. They see it as kind of uh, ripping off the customer, which we agree with. So so what we do is we say, look, use a tool like BuyBot Pro, which has got sales charts in it, and you can see the historic pricing of that item uh, like over, over the past. And then one of Karen's biggest tips has always been, do you, do you usually say, uh, put it at the maximum it's ever sold for on Amazon, and then you'll be okay? Is that what you already always say? Yeah, there's no guarantee that Amazon will make it okay, but yeah. my logic tells me that if Amazon's allowed the product to sell at that price in the past, the chances are they will allow you to sell at that price again. So yeah. have a look and see what the maximum price is that it's sold for, and then choose that as your maximum, and then I'm, you're not going to go too high. You can always be a little bit cheeky. Ultimately, the maximum is up to you, but when Amazon decides your price is too too much, it's gonna t it's gonna say no no buy box here or Worse, it could say you're being naughty seller. Don't do that. So ultimately, choose something that's fair. At the end of the day, we say we want a win-win-win. So we want you to win as a seller so you can continue to sell. We want Amazon to win as the platform that allows you to sell and gives you this amazing opportunity. And we want the customer to win at, at getting a decent price that, that's fair and reasonable for the quality of service and product that they're getting. So ultimately, it's not about price gouging and getting as much as you can. It's about managing that max price and making sure that even if it does max price, you're super happy because you made a few extra pounds or dollars, um, but the customer's not ripped off and Amazon's happy. So you've got to find that triangle of of kind of everybody win, win, win type thing. Yeah. Okay. So Josh says, when is a good time to use Dynamic Profit Builder? He thinks he missed it when I said it. Uh, I'd say any time. Dynamic is a great strategy. It's very, It's more profit focused than some of the others. So you wouldn't necessarily want to use that one on a listing uh, where there's a lot of competition because you're you're probably not going to get as much buy box action as you might like if you've got a lot of competition on your listing. So if you've got a little bit less competition on your listing, then Dynamic is a great strategy. It will make you lots of extra profit. And I think it's well, – I love that strategy. It's a great one. <laughs> it's a great one. So, yeah, any time, but not when you've got, like, loads and loads of competition. Otherwise, it's a good one to use. Okay. So, you pronounced his name really well before. I'm guessing it's Alejandro, and he he, he said he he said he was in Mexico, I think. Yeah. Um. So that might affect the the answer to this, but I let I let you go for it, Karen. Go on. Yeah, now I've said his hard, name. That means it's a hard one to answer. Okay, right. <laughs> so I use mostly PPP to get the buy box, but tons of my products do not get under the buy box. Do not get under the buy box price, even when my minimum price is lower than the buy box. I mailed the PPP team and told me to change to balanced or aggressive sales accumulator strategy, currently balanced sales. I did that and my products still do not get under the buy box, even when my minute is lower. I was also told that maybe the new buy box price is new in PPP. Do not appear the buy box winner price as the buy box. But it's been days and PPP still not showing the real buy box price. This is causing me a lot, a loss of loss, a lot of lost sales. Happens when the buy box is either FBA or FBM. What am I doing wrong? Alejandro, I tell you what we need to do. We need to have we need to get our senior dev to personally look at your account and make sure everything's set up okay. Because you said you as a Mexican seller. I wonder if there might be some uh I don't, I don't know, some some like setting that we're unaware of because obviously we built this software 
for UK, US and European sellers. And then we've added marketplaces since. So, I mean, Karen might have another thought on this. She might even know. She might even know about your particular case. But I would urge you to reach out to support again. Tell them that we want to personally have the senior dev take a look at your account and see if there's anything that we can fix or anything that we can sort out because that doesn't sound right to me. And if it's a settings issue, we'll be able to just point in the right direction and just get it fixed up for you. And if it's not, then we can have the senior dev fix whatever the issue is there and then for your account. So unless, Karen, you want to add anything more to that, I just want to have a personal attempt to sort out the problem personally. Go on. Actually, there's a couple of things I'm thinking of. The first may be that Profit Protector Pro already knows it can get sales higher than the buy box. And it doesn't need like higher than that. So it doesn't need to go, doesn't need to keep dropping your price. Yeah. It knows it can get the sales higher. And you're thinking you're losing a lot of sales, but you're not. And that that could be the, the situation that it is. The other situation that I was thinking, which now has gone completely out of my head. See, I was getting old. Is it, is it an exchange rate, currency thing? I, I think... I think the other day we was alerted to a bug with a, a currency, something to do with pesos versus dollars. There was some exchange rate thing going on. And because unless we're told about these issues, like we can't fix them. So I don't know if it's an issue. I don't know if it's a settings issue. I don't know if it's a something we can fix issue or if it's an exchange rate issue. But whatever it is, Alejandro, I can guarantee you we're going to give you personal attention and make sure that we get you fixed up so don't worry reach out to info at profitprotectorpro.com and give them a nudge and just say look matt and karen want the senior dev to take a look at this and see what's wrong if we can fix it um we'll we'll give you personal attention and get that sorted asap of course my other, yeah my other thing my other thought was i wonder you should also have a look and check that your amazon account health is in good shape because it could be that that's affecting how many, how much you get the buy box and what happens in terms of buy box action can be affected by your account health. So I'll, I'll have a look at that as well. But, yeah, we'll, we'll get it sorted out. Don't worry. We're, we're going to sort that. Don't worry, Alejandro. Okay. Um, Nicholas says, say you use profit, uh, passive profit maximizer and sell 10 identical. Oh, bye, Matt. See you later. I've just got to plug, I've got to plug my laptop in. It's going to run out of battery. All right, I'm good. See ya. Right. <laughs> Hey, so you use passive profit maximizer and sell 10 identical products in a day, making five pounds on each, total profit 50 pounds. Next day, you use super aggressive dominator. You sell 50 of the same items, but you get two pound profit on each one, total 100 pound profit. Can PPP suggest the optimal settings for each product? Obviously, there are more for more fees for more sales too. Nicola, I'm not sure I quite understand the question, if I'm honest. So you use profit, passive profit maximizer and sell 10 identical products in a day, making five pounds on each. Next day, you use super aggressive dominator. You sell 50 of the same items, but you get two pound profit on each one, total 100 pound profit. Can PPP suggest the optimal settings for each product? Am I being really? I don't understand the question. I'm struggling. Come Let's on, move on. We'll come back to that one then. I, I just plugged my laptop in. I don't know if you heard me say I didn't disappear. My, I was just going to run out, run out of battery. That's all right. It's all good. I don't quite understand Nicola's question. So maybe you can have a read of that and see if I'm just being really dim or whether we need her to rephrase it because I don't quite well, get we it. Got so, we got so much to cover. Let, let's Holly, Holly, if you can hear us, um, if you could just take a look at that question and get back to her directly with an answer. Hey, Nicola. Or, Nicola. So get back to her directly with an answer. Or, or we'll follow up with you on that, Nicola, because we, we need to keep this moving because we've got loads to cover. And I said we were going to cover everything tonight. And at this rate, we're not going to. So let's <laughs> try and speed to him. Do you all still recommend getting the break even from Biobot Pro, Josh says? Uh, I, I always recommend everyone uses Biobot Pro because you'd be bonkers not to use Biobot Pro. Uh, yeah, because the break even in Bybot Pro, it can get you, it knows all about everything to do with your uh, sales and your all your settings and everything else. Obviously, you've got settings in Profit Protect Pro, and Profit Protect Pro can get you the break even too. But I'd always suggest everyone uses Bybot Pro because it's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, um, has Amazon not also got similar algorithms working for them too? So, really, how much can you win? If it has no, they don't. Um, right? So, just a quick, because I'm trying to speed through it. Just a quick explanation as to how Amazon's free repricer works, right? The last I knew about it. 
you've got two sellers, one selling for $20, one selling for $20, okay? You're matching buy box. They decide, oh, I'm going to put my minimum in at $10, right? And then I'm going to put my minimum in, in at $10. Now, with any other repricer, if, if they were set on penny under repricing, it would go 1999, 1998, 1997, 1996. If it was on the, the thing we don't recommend, which is penny under repricing, it would do that slowly. So over the course of hours, weeks, days, months, whatever, it would slowly come down and you'd make sales and you want to get the buy box and then the other one dominate the buy box and all that stuff. With Amazon's free repricer, it just does this. So it goes, this seller's using Amazon's free repricer. This seller's, Amazon, seller's using Amazon's free repricer. We're both at $20, but the minimum is set at $10 each and we're set on penny under. So we'll just go like this. So it just drops you $10 instantly. I don't know if they've changed that, but that's definitely how it used to work when we started Profit Protector Pro because we were shocked. So, so like, because if you think about it, Amazon wants you to sell your product for as cheap as possible because that benefits them. It benefits their customers. But again, we look for them for that three wins, not just the two wins. And ultimately, having your price drop from $20 to $10 instantly because two sellers just decide their minimums are 20, 10, uh, like $10 different. That's not good for you guys. That's not good. So ultimately, Amazon's algorithms in our experience are working for Amazon. They're not working for you as a seller. Now, if you're talking about uh, like algorithms based on how they dish out the buy box, that's a different conversation. Uh, but again, we'll keep it speeding because I just realized maybe you didn't mean what I just said. But it's still, it's a great point. And hopefully anybody using Amazon's free repricer will realize, hang on. So if two people are using the free repricer, it's costing me a fortune. Yeah, because it's not really doing much of this. It's doing lots of this, not even doing this. It's just going boom like that, or it was, unless they've changed something, which I highly doubt. Um, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Right. Stephen says, what strategy would you suggest if you're sitting a few pounds above the buy box and the buy box price is below your minimum? So if you're sitting a few pounds above the buy box, so if, you're, if your minimum is above the buy box. If, if your minimum is above the buy box, then you, you're not going to get the buy box. Profit Protector Pro is not magic. It does do some magic stuff. But basically, if you think about it like this, look, you've got maximum here, you've got minimum here, and the buy box is here in the, in the middle somewhere. PPP can do miracles for you, and you'll do lots of selling in this area above that buy box, right? But if, you're, if your maximum is here, your minimum is here, and the buy box is down here off screen, PPP can't get you the sales. No repricer can get the sales. Now, I'm not saying Amazon won't randomly give you the buy box at a higher price. But honestly, in my experience, of years of looking at this stuff, it's not going to. So you have to have a fair minimum that you're happy selling at that is below the buy box price. I would advise maybe a pound or a dollar or something like that below the, the, the average buy box price. And then you're going to give PPP some wiggle room to work with. Do you want to add anything to that, Karen, or not? No, I think you've answered that. All good. Yeah. So, so just don't don't think that you can have your minimum maximum up here and the buy box is down here and PPP is going to get you the buy box. It's not going to. What you need to do is you need to have your minimum maximum up here, your minimum down here, and the buy box be somewhere in between. Ideally, with a nice little healthy um, bit for it to drop down if it needs to, to fish the buy box. But, but it's, it's not a miracle worker. Sorry, I said that twice. Go on. <laughs> uh, can PPP notice if the strategy made the buy box silent? Uh, does he mean uh, suppress buy box? Yes, I think so. Okay. I think so. Uh, and I don't think I know the answer to that question particularly. So can it notice if the strategy – yes, it must do because it, it knows if there is no buy box and it tries to create a buy box. Yeah. So – Therefore, it must know, it, it must notice if the strategy has made the buy box silent. But I don't think PPP would do that. I think what would happen is over time. If PPP has done it, it definitely knows. If yes. PPP, yeah, yeah, no, it definitely knows. If it's, if you're talking about does Profit Protector Pro know if a strategy of ours has made it suppressed? Yes, it does. I don't know if it has a way of finding out if it's suppressed in the first place. I'm not sure. I think it probably does, but. Again, we need the dev to, to tell us, really. Senior dev to tell us. Yeah. Okay, so Josh says, does PPP automatically adjust its strategy as more and more sellers get on the listing? 
Well, funny you should say that. <laughs> because if we've got time later, I've done a very quick sneak peek at something that's coming up on Profit Protect Pro very soon. And then the answer to that question will, will be yes. But it just just hang on in there. Stick with us. Yeah, basically, what, what Karen's hinting at is we're adding automation super soon. They're ready. We're adding little bits and tweaks and stuff. But automations is going in real soon. So as of very soon, it is going to do that. And I'm guessing that is what you're uh, going to reveal in a bit, is it? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Okay, so Josh says, got a feature request. Receive an email alert when the price hits your minimum. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it's cool. I like that. Holly, can you add that to the list if you're listening, please? We'll get that done. So Jeff says, as a general proposition, if you are the only FBA seller competing against MF sellers, do the strategies adjust prices to compete with the MF pricing or does it ignore the MF pricing? So it depends what strategy you're using, Jeff. If you go through that strategies page that I was going through in the video, it will tell you which ones compete with MF as well as FBA and which ones are only uh, competing with FBA sellers. So it will tell you that in the description of each of the strategies. So have a look. Um, uh, are, Josh says, are these live streams going to be a regular scheduled event? Yes. Yeah, that's the intention. Them and we think it's, it's good and I think it's helpful, but we'll get your feedback at the end and we'll see what you guys think. If you tell us that no, we wasted our evening, then no, I'll go and sit in the garden with a gin and tonic another time. But you know, <laughs> we'll be here if it's if it's wanted, yes. Simon says, I've noticed on an item four sellers are selling for the same price, but they are getting more sales going off Bybot Pro stock figures than this. Can this be accurate? I've noticed on an item four sellers are selling for the same price, but they are getting more sales going off Bybot Pro stock figures. Can this be accurate? I'm not quite sure what Simon means. He might have to reword that for us to understand. N Nicola said, "I'm afraid. I'm afraid I don't use Facebook mail. I email you, Holly. Yeah. If you want to email the team, info at profitprotectorpro.com, and one of the team will get back to you." Okay. So Stephen says, "If the buy box has gone below your break even, is what I mean, and I want to know what strategy to use to drag the price back up." Well, if if Stephen, what I think what Matt was trying to say was Profit Protector Pro has to be allowed to get the buy box to be able to raise the price for you. So if it can't get that buy box, then it can't take the price up for you. So if your break even is below the buy, is above the buy box, then I'd suggest you just hang on. I'd put it on something like balanced or cautious. And I would suggest that you leave PPP to do its thing because over time, so I've got to plug in. Because I just know oh, there you go. do it as well. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, so if, if if the buy if the buy box has gone below your break even, what strategy to to use to drag the price back up? If the buy box has gone below your break even, then you're not going to be dragging it back up unless you're willing to potentially lose money. So if it if any price goes below your break even, it's not to do with Profit Protector Pro. It's just to do with business. If it goes below your break even, to sell at less than that, you're going to lose money. So if you set your minimum lower than your break even to potentially fish the buy box, there's a plane going over, I don't know if you can hear it, then there's a chance you could sell at below your break even. So ultimately, that's a business decision for you to make. But I would probably sit tight, let the people sell out that are clearly dumping stock um, and wait for the prices to recover rather than try and chase it, unless you are willing to lose money. But that's not a PPP thing. That's just a business thing. Yeah, I would I would put it on something like cautious. So it's that it's trying to gonna rate, the minute it gets the opportunity to get that buy box and take the price up, it will. I yeah. thought it was something like that, Stephen. Um, okay, so Tolu, oh, asked, Tolu, sorry, Tolu said, I ask a question of PPC comparably to PPP as a pro FBA private label. Okay, Tolu, um, that, yeah, so PP, obviously PPC, so pay-per-click is definitely a, a, a big feature of doing private label. Um, but, but if you're doing private label, then you own the listing, then you probably won't need a repricer because th there shouldn't be people on your listing if it's your product, if you know what I mean. So you probably won't need a repricer, any repricer. Um, if you do, then something's going wrong in your private label journey. But some people do use it as an advanced OA strategy. 
Right, so before we get on to any more questions, shall we throw another training video in there? Okay, what one we can do next? I don't know, which one do you want? <gasps> well, um, automations is another really long, heavy one. So I don't know if we want to do that or if we want to no, go through the... Oh, Chrome <laughs> extension. What about the Chrome extension? Okay, so if we do the Chrome extension, we should then do the auto min max afterwards. So let's do okay. the Chrome extension then and then come back and do it because the Chrome extension is quite quick and quite basic until you get to, to automated mins and maxes. Cool, let's do it. Let's do it. A minute, guys. So the Chrome extension looks like this and it can be downloaded from the Chrome store. Now, if you're using Bybot Pro, there's the equivalent of this at the bottom of Bybot Pro and you can use it here or you can have the main Profit Protector Pro one here, entirely up to you. So as soon as you land on an Amazon page, Profit Protector Pro will fill in automatically the ASIN for you. So let's say you decided you're going to buy this, you've analysed a deal, you're going to buy this at £5, let's say, okay? So you're going to buy that at £5 and you're going to sell it FBO. Now the reason we've got this toggle here is so that when Profit Protector Pro is looking at your break even, if you're going to automate your break even and your min and max, then Profit Protector Pro knows what fees to assign to the break even. So you can toggle on and off FBA or FBM, whichever you're doing. And then if you don't want to use break even or the automate min and max, which we will cover in a separate video anyway, then you just enter your minimum, let's say your minimum is £10, your maximum is £20, and the strategy you want is passive profit maximizer, let's say. And then you would click save in PPP, which I'll do in a second, and then it will go into your inventory and profit protection. Which I'll do in a second. And, and then it will go bar into here, your you can go into this relates to the automated And you've got this settings bar up here, which you so can go into. This relates to the automated break even and min max. So you'd only use that if you're using this feature here. Otherwise, so you can ignore. Sorry, I don't know what went off there. Did you hear that? Was it all like weird? Yeah, you, you've come in here twice, I think. He's put you in here twice for some reason. Yeah, it's, Holly's trying to connect. I've just, uh, this is going to sound crazy, and I'm really sorry, guys, but I've just come over feeling really, really, really poorly. I felt poorly all day, but, like, I really feel poorly. So I said, Holly, can you jump on? Because I think I'm going to literally be sick. <laughs> so I know that sounds crazy and nuts, and I'm really sorry, guys. I know it's not very professional of me, but I feel so, I've tried to I've tried to soldier on through, but I feel like death, on death's door here, so... Ollie Chops is here to take over. Sorry, guys. It's all right. Wishing you better. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's go again. Let's uh, let's go again. So sorry. Okay. I think it was me because I had you already playing, and then I joined, but I didn't stop it. So you could hear it through my microphone. I think that's all right. No worries. Sorry, guys. Let's go again. So we will. Play the Chrome extension. Right, so just turn off our videos and go and do that. So the Chrome extension looks like this and it can be downloaded from the Chrome store. Now, if you're using Bybot Pro, there's the equivalent of this at the bottom of Bybot Pro and you can use it here or you can have the main Profit Protector Pro one here, entirely up to you. So as soon as you land on an Amazon page, Profit Protector Pro will fill in automatically the ASIN for you. So let's say you decided you're going to buy this, you've analysed a deal, you're going to buy this at £5, let's say, okay? So you're going to buy that at £5 and you're going to sell it FBO. Now the reason we've got this toggle here is so that when Profit Protector Pro is looking at your break even, if you're going to automate your break even and your min and max, then Profit Protector Pro knows what fees to assign to the break even. So you can toggle on and off FBA or FBM, whichever you're doing. And then if you don't want to use break even or the automate min and max, which we will cover in a separate video anyway, then you just enter your minimum. Let's say your minimum is £10, your maximum is £20. And the strategy you want is passive profit maximizer, let's say. And then you would click save in PPP, which I'll do in a second, and then it will go into your inventory in Profit Protector Pro. And you've got this settings bar up here, which you can go into. This relates to the automate break even and min max. 
So you'd only use that if you're using this feature here. Otherwise, you can ignore that settings wheel completely. And as I say, we'll cover that in a separate video to do with automating your break even and min and max. So we've saved it in Profit Protector Pro. Now don't forget, the best way to get a product into your inventory in Profit Protector Pro is like this and through the extension or through the BuyBot Pro widget, whichever you prefer. Because when, you, when your products go into Amazon, if you haven't done it like this through the extension, then you have to wait for Amazon to sync with Profit Protector Pro. And that happens very regularly, but you still have that period of when Profit Protector Pro and Amazon are syncing. Whereas if you use the extension, it's in your Profit Protector Pro account immediately. And the second it goes live in Amazon, Profit Protector Pro is repricing for you. So I've already clicked save in P or we'll click save in PPP. So setting up your ASIN in PPP. Save complete, now ready to start repricing. So if I go into my PPP account here, refresh it. There's our Barbie doll. Obviously it's not starting to reprice yet because it's not in stock. So it won't, if you can leave that on. If you leave it on, the second it's, repri the second it's in stock at Amazon, it will start repricing. And then all of this data will get filled in the minute it is in stock. And there's your minimum and your maximum and off you go. That's it. Simple, super easy repricing straight from the Amazon page. It literally couldn't be any easier. And as I say, the best thing to do is always to make sure that you add your products like that because it's much better than waiting for them to sync with Amazon because there'll always be that period where that sync is waiting or is going through the process. Whereas this way, that very second it's live in Amazon, PPP takes over your repricing. There's no delay and straight away re Profit Protector Pro is doing all its stuff to get you sales and profit. Okay, so here we are. Right, let's get back. Can we remove Matt from here? Is he coming back? I don't think so, no. But if, I'm, if I eject him, am I going to eject you as well? I don't know. <laughs> okay, we'll just leave, we'll leave it. It's fine. Okay. So let's go back and have a look at uh, the questions. So uh, let's have a look. I can only see from when I joined. That's okay. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Lots of people wishing Matt all better. So we hope he's feeling better very soon. Oh, there you go. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Hi, Matt. Uh, Darren says the Chrome extension is one of his favorite features. It's amazing. It's an amazing feature. So and it means it's repriced in that second, which is fantastic. Can we get Chrome extension on mobile too? Uh, I don't think so because a Chrome extension is a no. Chrome is a desktop thing, I think. I don't know how it works on mobile. No, so it doesn't work. Yeah, no, so I don't think that will work. But obviously, we've got a mobile app, so you can have that <laughs> definitely working on your mobile, Sean. Um, so, Chris, I thought we priced some defaults to on after entering the min max from the widget. Do we definitely have to go in and toggle on? No, it defaults to on, Chris. It's straight away on, so it's all good. I just I was messing about with it, switching it off, so it's all good. It's there. Yeah. It's good. Okay, great. So, we've, we've dealt with all the questions from that. So I think what we'll do now is we'll go straight into the uh, automate the mins and maxes. Yeah. Uh, if we do that tonight, it will mean that we probably won't be able to play anything else because I think that video is quite long because it's quite a complicated, um, complicated thing, isn't it? So yeah. that, that would be a shame. But I think we still should do that. I think it's really good value to be able to use that. So let's get it done. Let's get started. So I'm going to start the video on the automated mins and maxes and we'll be back with you soon, guys. So if you're going to use the automated values within Profit Protector Pro, and that is either the break even, the minimum and the maximum. Then the first thing you need to do is set up the settings to do with those automated values. So you need to come over to your account and you can go into break even settings. And you include in here your prep fee, your bundle fee, which will be added together if Profit Protector Pro knows that it is a bundle. Uh, your extra fee, your extra fee percent if you want to use those, entirely up to you. Your shipping cost, which obviously if in the US you'd choose pounds, if you're in the UK you need to choose kilos. Then you've got your UK VAT, if you're in the US or in Canada choose not applicable. If you are 
in a country where VAT is a thing, then choose your VAT status. If you're not VAT registered, then just choose non-VAT registered. You can choose your ROI calculation method in here. So if you're in the UK, method one is the most popular, but method four is the most accurate. And if you're in the US, then method five is the one to go for. So you choose your ROI method and then click Save Changes. So Profit Protect Pro will come up and show you that it's saved your changes. So that's your break even sorted out. Then you come up here and you go to your minimum and maximums. So this will show whatever marketplaces you've got turned on within your account. So I've got the UK, Canada, the US and Poland turned on just to give you a complete range. Now your default marketplace will always show first. This one's just set up with a UK account. But if you're in the US, then US will be the first one that you will see. And then you can choose what, how you want your minimum price worked out and how you want your maximum price worked out. So UK, let's just go for the default marketplace to start with. So let's say you want to have a ROI of at least 30%. So you change that to 30%. So an ROI of plus, because you don't want to be you know, losing money, plus 30%. And if you just choose no further conditions, Profit Protector Pro will set your minimums where you choose to use this at 30% ROI. Now, if you want to get a bit more complicated, you can do so. And you can choose and at least or at least. Now, what these do, let me talk you through what they do. So, and at least, let's say you wanted at least five pounds ROI. So, you've got your ROI of at least 30%. And means as well as, so it will have to meet both of these criteria before it sets your minimum price, and an ROI return of at least five pounds. So if it, it'll have to meet both of those return, both of those criteria, if you've chosen and at least. If you choose or at least, it will stop and it will put your minimum price at whichever one it hits first. So if it was to hit thirty percent first, that would that would do it. Wouldn't have to also hit this one. If you want it to hit both of them, then you have to choose and at least. And if you're happy with it only hitting one of them, then you can choose or at least. Or you can make it really easy and choose no further conditions. So you're setting your ROI at plus 30%. Now, if you want other options, you can use them. So you've got break even, you've got buy, buy box, and you've got default marketplace. So you can choose any of these to go you can say i want to be 45 percent over my break even fine but once again you can choose and at least or at least as i explained and means it has to hit both of the criteria or means at least it has to hit at least one of the criteria or you can make it easy and choose no further conditions but whatever it is you want so maybe you want the roi maybe you're, you're an roi fan and you want to do that across your whole all your marketplaces. So you want 45% ROI in Canada, maybe in the in the US you want 20% and in Poland you want 35%. Oh, 35%. So that's how you work out those. The same thing applies here. You can add your and on or at least on all of them if you want to. And then you want to switch it on. So you're going to switch on all of these, all of these marketplaces in terms of switching on your automated repricing. But if you don't want to do that, you can switch that, turn that to off, and then Canada will not be automated at all for your minimums. And then you have to look at your maximums. Now, I would always suggest to make auto repricing really easy. If you've chosen ROI up here, you stick to ROI down here. Because it's all too easy if, for instance, you're saying, like, if you're in Canada and you're saying, 45% ROI for my minimum, but my buy box can be 80%. It's all too easy for your maximum to end up at a lower price than your minimum. And when we go and use these in a minute, and I'll talk you through how to use that on the extension and within the inventory page of Profit Protect Pro, what you'll find is these will just go red because it will be like, oh, don't understand what you're talking about. Don't get it. You're, you're not making sense. So Profit Protect Pro will just go red and say, I can't do what you're asking me to do. The maths don't work. So if you've used ROI up here, I'd suggest you use ROI down here and the same for buy box or whatever it is you've chosen. So let's just stick to ROI. 
So then you can always make sure that your ROI on your on your minimum is is lower than your ROI on your maximum. So then you can just go through here. So this we change this if we're going to do ROI or maybe we're going to make both of these break even. For instance, if you're making both break even, then that's 20% and that's 70%. So we know that will work, okay? And the same with the buy box. So if you want to be 35% and 70%. So then you can make sure that you're going to, you know, the maths is going to work properly. Otherwise, you're just overcomplicating it for yourself and making it too much. So I'm going to turn these marketplaces off because I don't have them set up in this account. And it'll just, well, actually, I'll leave one of them on. Let me leave one of them on. Let me leave the US on so I can show you what it looks like when it doesn't work. Because this account isn't a US account, doesn't have US keys set up with it. So Profit Protector Pro won't be able to do the US uh, calculation for this because it doesn't have an ASIN to apply it to. So let me click save changes and let's head over to an Amazon page. So let's just refresh this page and let's say we're buying this product for three pounds or three dollars. So we stick in our three pounds and our three dollars there and then we're going to click automate min and max but before that do that I'm just going to let you know that over here on this settings panel you can click this and it will take you into your settings. So if you ever need to check what your settings are, you can just click that little wheel and it will take you into there. And obviously from there, you can navigate to your break-even settings as well if that's what you want to do. And now what I'm just going to do is click automate break-even and min-max. So Profit Protector Pro is now doing all that calculation for me. So obviously we don't have US keys here um, and we've switched off Poland and Canada anyway. But what will happen is you can see here like the auto calculation is successful in certain places and where it's unable to calculate based on the current settings, then it will go red like this has. And this is why I want to show you this. So you can see the UK, it's given me my break even of £8.70. It's added in my minimum and my maximum based on the settings that I chose. Uh, the US is, even though we left it switched on in the minimum and maximum settings, is red because it can't do that because this is not an uh, US account it's a UK account and obviously we switched off Canada and, and Poland anyway so that's how the min and max looks and it tells you what it can and it can't do so we can choose our strategy let's go for cautious sales enhancer and then let's save it into PPP so that's now saved into Profit Protector Pro so let's go and have a look at what it's done Let's go into our Profit Protector Pro account and go into our inventory. And there it is. So there is our product that we've just added. Our marketplaces, there was no listings in there and we turned off uh, the auto min max settings for some of them anyway. So here you've got your product. It's here and it's ready to go. And you can see that Profit Protector Pro has switched it on for repricing straight away. So what will happen is that will go live the second it hits Amazon. When you add a product through the extension, which is absolutely the best way to do it, it always means that your product goes live immediately it arrives in Amazon. As soon as Amazon hit that key to say, yes, we've got it, Profit Protector Pro is in charge of your repricing rather than having to wait for it to sync. So that's a great way to add in products into your Profit Protector Pro account but we cover that more when we talk about the extension anyway but it's here you break even and all this data will start to populate once the product goes live so you're good to go you're all done and you're good to go now as we talked about with um, other marketplaces and such like you can also manage all your break evens from and your minimums and maximums from within here so you can you've got it in different places to do it so, as you can see here, this break-even up here allows you to apply the break-even and minimum maximum to all marketplaces. I mean, we've got, we haven't got any listings, so it's, it's irrelevant. But if you had listings in all of these places, this button here would allow you to automate your minimum maximum in each of those countries. And you click that and it would go off and do its thing. You've got your minimum here, so you can. This is also the automated ones. So if you just want to automate the minimum of one marketplace, you can do that here. And what it does, it just says, "Would you like to calculate a new break-even price?" Yes. So it will just start to queue that, and it will 
work it out. It's done it instantly for you. There you go. Um, which is obviously it's the same because we've only just done it. But your maximum here as well, if you just want to apply your automated maximum sentence for the UK, you can do that there. And then this one here does both your minimum and your maximum. So you've got four different options in calculating your break even. This one does the whole ASIN in every marketplace. This one does just your minimum. This one does just your maximum. And this one does just your break even minimum maximum. So just these. So you've got lots of options of how to use that and get the most from the automated mins and maxes. But always do make sure that as we did when we were working it out, that we had these things matching. Because if you don't have these matching, if you have it set up like this, where they're all doing different things potentially, you know, you've got one on break even, then you've got another on default marketplace. This is, you're going to make it so confusing for yourself. So make sure whatever you do in the minimum is the same as what you're doing with the maximum. So if you choose ROI here, choose ROI there. And that way you'll make it as simple as possible to apply it to all of your products. And when you're happy, and yes, I've worked it all out right. I've checked a few ASINs. I'm good. My, I know what I'm doing. You can click to apply to your whole inventory if you want to do that. So that's how the automated mins max and the automated break even work within Profit Protector Pro. Here we are. Here we are. Right, are we back? We're back. Okay, good. So does it, oh look, cases is all going way over her head. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I'd done it really clearly. It's, it's quite a complicated feature. So, you know, if you've got any questions at all, has anyone got any questions about the Automate Minimax or about the Chrome extension or anything of that? If you've got some questions, please stick them in the chat and we will get them answered for you. Diane says, I've noticed a weird thing when I change pricing in the seller app. The seller central price seems to stick and my items don't reprice. I don't know what that would be. Any idea, Holly? I'm not sure what it would be. It could be that you've got Amazon's repricer on. Uh, yeah, that could be fine. causing an issue. Can you hear the fan in my laptop? I can, yeah. It sounds like you're ready to take off. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, Diane, I don't know. If you reach out to us at support, we will help work out what's going on. But off the top of my head, I don't know what the answer to that is. So please reach out to us and we'll let us help you sort it out and we'll get it, we'll get it sorted. Uh, Kay says it's not me. Thanks, Kay. <laughs> um, okay, Elaine says, can you set the automated min and max by individual product or group of products instead of all inventory? Yes, you can set it by individual product. You would literally, well, you'd need to set up your settings for each time. You'd have to change your settings and then apply it to that ASIN and then change your settings again and then apply it to a different ASIN. So I think we've got some work still to do on this feature. I think we've got some enhancements to this feature we want to do. And I think we'll be working on that in the coming coming weeks and months, I think, for sure, because we've got lots of ideas of how we can improve it. And that's what we do with all Profit Protector Pro features. We bring it out, we get it working, and then we like we tweak it and we, we keep making it better. So we will keep doing that for that feature as well. Okay, so no one else has got any questions on that. So that's good. So let's go into the next video. So what should we do next? Shall um, we do... Left. We've got the mobile app, the custom strategies sneak peek at what's going on. We'll definitely play that last. Yeah. And we've got uh, the profit, the buy, box, the buy box boost video. So let's maybe do, do a couple of those. Yeah. So let's do those. Okay, right, off we go. See you in a bit. Hey, so I'm hey, in, so a, I'm demo, in a demo, demo account. Demo account right now. So right ignore now. the numbers on here, but what I want to show you is the 30 day Profit Protector Pro Boost and the all time Profit Protector Pro Boost. So what are these, you ask? I'll tell you right now. So um, this is additional profit PPP has generated by selling above the buy box. Now, some people get this confused and go, selling above the buy box, you can't really sell above the buy box. And strictly, yeah, I mean, you can sell above the buy box, but it would mean that the person purchasing would have to literally select you as a seller. So we're not saying that Profit Protector Pro is able to kind of, I don't know, 
um, do some miracle whereby like we steal the buy box and delete the buy box and reverse it and blah, blah, blah. No, no, that's not what this is. What it is, is imagine if there is, say, um, I don't know, 10 sellers on a listing and they're all selling for $19.99, okay? So 10 sellers, all $19.99, right? Now, you could come in and price at $19.99 and, yeah, you might not have an equal share of the buy box, but at some point, you're going to get some buy box action by simply being the same price as everybody else, but what Profit Protector Pro aims to do is it aims to fish the buy box. So it uses algorithms to basically uh, give Amazon a nudge to encourage you to get the buy box. And it does that by price changing um, and a few bits and bobs algorithmically. So, I mean, to even try and explain it and understand it, there's no point. But basically, it uses computer algorithms, intelligent algorithms to learn a listing uh, so each listing is literally learned in real time. And as it changes, it changes that learning as well. So like Facebook ads uh, with pixels, Profit Protector Pro learns listings. So over time, it gets smarter. And what it does is it fishes the buy box and then it increases the price whilst maintaining the buy box, which in effect drags the price upwards. So actually, you're not losing the buy box. You're increasing the buy box price. Now, this happens because we're able to do this super quick algorithmically and it drags the price up. So what will actually happen is say there's 10 sellers on the list and in your seller number 11, uh, maybe you are, maybe maybe Profit Protector Pro takes the price to $24.99. So you've almost, well, you're five pounds or $5 more expensive than everybody else. Now, you might say, well, you'll lose the buy box the moment you go one penny or one cent above it, but that's not how it works. It might work if you do that manually. It might work if you do that with rule-based reprices, but with Profit Protector Pro's algorithmic re repricing strategies, not all of them, the algorithmic ones, it actually drags the buy box up. So in effect, if the other people are using intelligent algorithmic reprices, they might even go up with you. So increasing the overall price for everybody. But even if they don't, what ha actually happens is uh, the price increases, Profit Protector Pro increases the price, and then at some point it will it will continue to try to algorithmically increase the price, having learned the listing and learning in real time, but at some point it will probably lose the uh, buy box. Now, some people go, oh, you've lost the buy box, that's terrible. No, because what it does is it, it learns where it lost it and it takes that into account next time and then it tries to fish it again at the higher price and oftentimes we can get it again. Now, honestly, that is a real bare basic explanation of how it works, but basically it's using software, using uh, intelligent algorithmic, you could even call it artificial intelligence, a very narrow based artificial intelligence to actually learn the listing and grab the buy box and then it increases the buy box. So. Yes, we're not making sales above the buy box. What we're doing is we're making sales above the average buy box. So let's say 10 sellers have been selling on a listing and it's been $19.99 for a month. That we would consider to be the average kind of buy box at that moment in time. It's $19.99. Now, if PPP is able to get you a sale at 21 or 21.56 or 22.37, well, that is profit over and above the average kind of profit that, that was there before. So those 10 sellers selling at $19.99 for a month, you come in and sell at $21.56. Yes, you dragged the buy box upwards with Profit Protector Pro's algorithmic restrategy. So we call that the Profit Protector Pro boost. And when you use our algorithmic strategies in uh, PPP, that figure that we calculate, and I accept that um, there has to be some guesswork that goes into it. So I'm not saying that we can accurately predict what the buy box should have been and blah, blah, blah. There has to be a certain amount of guesswork, but we do it in a real smart and intelligent way whereby we suggest it's guesswork, but actually it's probably pretty damn accurate. And that goes into these figures here. So all-time Profit Protector Pro Boost is the additional profit PPPs 
generated by selling above it should say something like the average buy box or something like that. So in my example, 19.99, and we get you a sale at 23.99. Well, 3.99, that 3.99 extra would have gone into this calculation here. Now, like I say, this is a demo account. These aren't proper figures, but it adds it up. So all time, it adds up how how much it's done that. So let's say it does it. Let's say you've got 10 uh, items in stock of one particular SKU. Um, and it sells them, maybe it sells the first one at eight pence or eight cents above the buy box or above that average buy box that I talked about, it would have it would add eight to this figure, eight cents or eight pence to this figure. And then maybe the next one, it's able to get you 34 pence or 34 cents more. That would be added to this figure. So, so hopefully that makes sense. But this is the 30-day Profit Protector Pro Boost. So this is what it's done in the last 30 days, and this is what it's done all time. Now, we only started, we only implemented this, I think it was like, I can't remember if it was May 2020 or something like that. So it's not all time since your account started, but it's all time since we put this feature in. Uh, I can't remember the exact date. Um, maybe it's a year or something like that so far, and counting, obviously. But this 30-day Profit Protector Pro, Pro Boost. Basically, the way we see it is if you use our algorithmic strategies, this doesn't this doesn't work on our rules-based ones. We do offer rules-based, but if you use our algorithmic strategies and this figure is above the cost of Profit Protector Pro itself, then just in the Profit Protector Pro Boost alone, we are you are you are making way more money with us than using any other repricing solution. So something like Amazon's free repricer is fine if you've got a couple of SKUs in there and you want to do a very basic rules-based approach. Cool, turn it on, you know, give it a, a try, why not? But ultimately, you're not going to get that algorithmic power from something like that. In fact, what I call the dinosaur repricers from yesteryear, they're, they're the same. You don't get the, the, the algorithmic boost that Profit Protector Pro gives you. Now, we don't just use any algorithms. We use proprietary algorithm, algorithms that are only in Profit Protector Pro. So this is not the overall profit that you've made with Profit Protector Pro. This is the overall profit that we consider you've made extra to what you'd have made with another, say, excellent repricer. So if you've got, and, and bear in mind, excellent repricers tend to be in the hundreds of dollars a month. Uh, but if you if, if you used one of those, an excellent repricing, maybe you're spending $300, $400 a month, maybe even $800 a month for one of these excellent repricers, um, that would get you X amount of profit. And Profit Protector Pro Boost is getting you additional profit on top of that. So as far as we're concerned, if you're seeing good healthy figures here, it's a slam dunk. You are literally losing money by not using Profit Protector Pro. So hopefully... That gives you a good explanation as to what this is. If you've got any questions, though, um, as previously, just ask them right now and we'll try our best to answer them. OK, here we are. Here we are. So Chris says, does PPP have a database of prices from listings from other PPP users? So in, work, in other words... Are you building up a database of learnt listings rather than starting from scratch each time? Chris, we're not holding a database because every listing changes all of the time. So the information would be out of date and we'd be using out of date information if we used it for somebody else next week, for instance, because the sellers are different. The prices are different. Amazon's behavior in terms of the listing will be different. So we start from scratch each time because we think that's the best way to get the best result for you. I'm sure it'd be easier for us if we get, <laughs> built up a database and just plugged it in for that ASIN or for that ASIN. But I don't think you'd get anywhere near as good a result with Profit Protector Pro as you do when we do it all uh, for each one. So, yeah, we do it from scratch each time for each of your listings. Uh, Sean says, mine's boosted sales nearly 6,000 by 6,000 pounds. Amazing. When I work out the money PPP is doing for me, it covers my monthly package. When you think about it, PPP makes me money. Absolutely. Perfectly said, Sean. It absolutely does. Makes you a lot more money. OK, so Webinar Jam only let us have this room for two hours. So we've got 15 minutes left. <laughs> so 
I, uh, logic tells me I should play the next one of Matt's profit boosts one so we can carry on the same thing. But I think people want to see the app. I think it's coming, isn't it? It's it's well, it's here for Android users. And, you know, we're just hopefully just a few days away for Apple users because Apple's just yeah, yeah. Being a bit difficult. <laughs> But it's fine. We've got to work around now. So we're just going to sort that out and, and get it live. So it'll be with you very soon. So let's play the last video, which is going to be the app to show you how that works. So we will be back shortly, guys. Hey, guys, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the PPP mobile app. So let's start in the top right hand corner. You can select the icon up there and this will allow you to filter through your marketplaces and your different filters. So here you'll see all of the filters that you have on your main PPP desktop. And here you will see all of the marketplaces that you currently have switched on. You can select as many of these as you would like at any one time, but you can only select one of these filters here. You can click on the bin icon and that will set everything back to the way that it was when you first opened PPP. So this will show all products in all marketplaces. Here you can also click expand view. So as you can see, when you toggle this on, you can see your stock, your current price, your break even, your min, your max. You have the ability to switch the ASIN on and off and you can also select your strategy. Once you've changed an ASIN, anything about it, so whether it's min, whether it's max, whether it's the strategy, you will be asked to save or cancel. So let's click save here. And then also you can toggle off the expanded view and this will allow you to look at more ASINs in a, what is quite a small space on your phone screen. I like to have it in the expanded view, so I'm gonna keep it that way for this video. You also have the ability to search. So. Let's say, for example, that you have some products that are Lego. This will then bring up all of the products that you have that keyword in. You can also search an ASIN on here and that will work as well. Up in the top left hand corner, you have the settings. So this is just where you have your email address, your first name and your last name. Should you need to change anything in there? And then there is also the log out button at the top, just in case you would like to log out after each use. As you saw before, this is where you can change your mins and maxes. So let's say that we want the minimum to be 350 on here and we want to bump this up to 899. We can do that. And if we want to change the strategy, we can also do that as well. So let's pick dynamic profit builder and then we would click save. Now let's say that we don't click save and we scroll all the way down here and we then try to edit another ASIN. This is where it's going to tell you that you need to decide whether or not you want to save your previous. So it will give the option to save previous or go back to previous or cancel. So we're going to click save previous and then it will then allow us to actually edit this SKU here. And we're going to go for 350 again, very cheap for this item. And then we'll put 13.99 here and then we're going to select a strategy. Click save and switch it on. As you can see here, if you attempt to turn an ASIN on, when there are no mins and maxes, it's going to tell you that it can't do that. You have to have a minimum and a maximum to allow us to actually reprice for you. So if you do see this message, it's not broken. We just need to enter in the mins and the maxes. If you click on the title, then it will bring up the full title. So obviously sometimes on Amazon, some products will have some really, really, really long titles. And we of course can't fit all of it on the screen. So we thought it would be a great idea to allow you to see the full title should you need to. That's all for this video. If you have any questions, then obviously let Matt and Karen know in the webinar and I will also be in the comments ready to help you. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, you're not you're not in the chat. You're here live with us. <laughs> yeah. anyway. That was unexpected. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited about that app. That app is so good. It's so good. It works like magic, doesn't it? It's yeah. brilliant. It's it really brilliant. is awesome. It really, really is awesome. So if anyone, everyone's gone quite quiet in the chat, 
So I guess we're just keeping you busy with loads of information, which is a good thing as well. But let us know if you're happy with everything you're seeing and how it's going as well. And we've got webinar, we've, we've got 10 minutes left. Shall we play that quick sneak peek and give you guys that have stayed with us till the end a little view of something that we've got coming up? Okay, we've got some questions first. Quick, we've got to the questions. So uh, Nike says, how can you download the app? If you are on Android, you can go to the Google Play Store and it is in there. If you are on Apple, then pay attention to the PPP Facebook group and we'll post in the next couple of days when Apple have uh, approved it and it's all working okay because they're being a little bit slow. So Adam says, sorry if you've already answered this, but I have a question about putting in min-max prices. When I send in a replenishable, I have a, a new M SKU. So PPP wants a new min-max price, but I just want it to use the same min-max that I used earlier. Is there a way to set it on the ASIN level instead of the MS SKU? Or is that not best practice? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, there isn't a way to do that. You need to set it up again, Adam, at the minute. Maybe that's something we can take away and look at whether that's something we should be doing and need to do to make it a better experience for Adam and, and other, other clients. I think there could potentially be a big room for error there, though. Um, yeah. A lot of people get confused anyway between the um, SKUs and which one it's going to um, reprice. So we would definitely have to tread carefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Adam, we'll go away and talk about that and see if there's something that we can do with that. Yeah. Okay. Right, so hopefully they're not going to cut us off. And I'm going to quickly give you this sneak peek of something that is coming very, very soon. Please don't cut us off webinar jam. Please don't. How long it. is the video? I can't remember, but it can't be very long, can it? Yeah. Let's get started and see if we can do some of it anyway. We'll be yeah. back shortly, guys. So here's a quick sneak peek of what's going on with the custom strategies. So this feature is currently in beta, but for those of you with us tonight, we just wanted to give you this naughty little quick sneak peek at what's going on. So the first, the custom strategy version one is just the first version in what is going to be a massive feature in Profit Protector Pro. And it's got a great wizard that you can go through and it talks you through how to set up a strategy with what you want to do and how you want to do it and everything else. But more importantly, and what's really, really exciting as well, is we've got this. So I've skipped quite a lot of the questions. And look, we've also got automations and the start of automations in this custom strategy feature. So you can change your, your strategy based on what's going on with your product, and how long it's been for sale, or maybe how many sellers are on the listing, or if your stock changes. Anyway, that's it. That's the, just a quick sneak peek that I've given you. A version one of the custom strategies and automations linked in together that is currently in beta and testing. And as soon as we've got it right and working well, we will send it out to you guys. So luckily enough, it was really quick. I mean, it, was really super quick. it was super quick. <laughs> so we just wanted, for you guys that have stayed with us, we wanted to share that with you. It's currently in beta. So it's being tested by some of our users and we're just, you know, finding out all what's right with it, what's wrong with it. And we will get it to you as quickly as we can, as soon as we've got it working as we want to. But it's just version one. Uh, we're super excited about it. It's fantastic. And we can't wait until we get to version 10, let alone version one. But anyway, <laughs> we need to not get quite so overexcited. Anyway, we've only got a few minutes left, guys. So if you've got a question for us, please get it in the chat now because we're running out of time and uh, Webinar Jam are going to boot us out. So the feature will be with you very soon. The app's already out. So hopefully, yep, yeah, download your app if you're in Apple. Sorry, just got to wait another few days, but we're getting there. We're getting there, I promise. Just waiting for Apple to stop being quite so difficult. Um, yeah, the new, everyone's loving the new feature. It's great. It's a fantastic feature. It's going to bring so much extra to Profit Protector Pro. So not only are you going to get your buy box boosts, but obviously in a great, you know, your great old, like strategies and such like, you're going to get uh, automations and custom strategies as well. So you can build your own strategies and what you want them to do. So it's going to be fantastic. And yes, Sean, you're right. Q4 is going to be amazing. As Matt would say, he's not here to say it. So best Q4 ever. <laughs> what it's going to be. It's definitely what it's going to be.
Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure being with you this evening. Thank you so, so much for your time. We're hoping to do it again. We didn't get through all our videos. We, we had more to show you and we haven't even covered all the features yet. So we've got, we definitely need to do some more sessions and we think it's been amazing. So thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Dean and Sean and Jackie's been with us and Vladislav and Simon and Nicola and Don and Donna and Chris and Nike and Darren. I'm going to miss somebody out. And Adam. <laughs> I'm going to miss people out. I don't mean to offend anybody that I miss out. Emma and Elaine and Kay and Diane uh, and obviously Matt, who's been in the chat as well, and Daphne, um, Alexandro. Oh, look, look, the webinar jam telling me, wrap it up. You've got five minutes. Yeah. I'm, going as as I'm, webinar jam. Shush. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. Uh, Linda and everybody else that I haven't managed to mention. Tolos, thank you all so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you this evening and thank you Holly for jumping on and joining me tonight because I would have been lonely on all on my Todd otherwise so thanks so much for being here and you've put huge amounts of work into the not only into Profit Protector Pro but into the app Holly has literally designed and built that app with the developers herself and she's done an amazing job it's phenomenal so if you've got any questions about the app definitely direct them to Holly yeah. thank you so much for being with us guys it's been an absolute pleasure and we will see you again soon Good night. Bye, guys. Good night.